Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hi everyone, Sue here at 1A Auto, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do front brakes on a 2011 F-150. If you need these parts or any other parts for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. To remove the tire, you need a 21 millimeter socket, and you're gonna break the lug nuts free with the pressure of the vehicle on the tire. Now I'm gonna raise and support the vehicle with a two post lift. You can use a jack and jack stands at home. Now that the vehicle's up, I can take the lug nuts off to remove the tire. And be prepared, this thing is heavy. <laughs> when you have a tire that's stuck on the hub, all the lug nuts are off. You obviously, you can't pull it off. Always put a lug nut, just hand thread it a little bit. So when it does break free, it doesn't bounce back at you. First thing I always do before I remove a caliper, before I do a brake job, is I open the bleeder screw. That way I can push the caliper piston back. You never want to push the caliper piston back with the bleeder screw closed on an ABS system. We know this has ABS because we have the ABS wire right here. But what happened was reverse flow can damage the ABS module, and that turns into a couple thousand dollars. It's simple, just make sure the bleeder screw breaks open. I'm going to have to spray that down. Sometimes what I do when I have a bleeder screw that's frozen in there, believe it or not, I don't tap on the bleeder screw. I tap around it. And if there's rust in there, it actually breaks it free. This particular bleeder screw on this 2011 is a 3.8. Look at that, see? It's just a little old trick. So we want the bleeder screw to open. You just want to make sure it opens up so that you can open it later. So I'm just going to snug it. I'm not going to really, because I got to loosen that with it unmounted. 13 millimeter socket loosens up the outer caliper mounting bolts. Now this would be the caliper bolts to the bracket. The reason I say that is because if you were to look up torque specs, that's how they would list it, caliper to caliper bracket. And just put those aside. Now I'm going to take a pry bar and I'm just going to pry my caliper off the bracket, away from the pads and the rotors. Rotor, sorry. There it is. When I take it off like that, first thing I'm going to look for is any damage. You want to examine the, the piston housings. And someone here put, they use this stuff to stop the pads from making noise, which. But you look at the boots, make sure they're dry. There is no wetness to them. There's no tears. The outer one is a dust boot, but you do not want tears on it because it will get dust inside where the O-ring sits and jam that piston up. So these look in good shape. Now I'm going to make sure that they go back and we'll continue with the brake job. Okay, on this case, I'm going to take the, one of the pads off. They're both coming off, so you can take them both off, but I'm going to use this inner pad right now to help push back this caliper pistons. The tool I have is a ratcheting style tool and it's awesome for caliper pushing, especially when it comes to dual pistons. So I put the pad in there to pick up the distance, and I'm just gonna ratchet this back. I'm just snugging it right now because I have to open that bleeder screw. It's kind of cumbersome the way everything falls around here. But now that's snug, now I can break open the bleeder screw. And I'm gonna 
hopefully get the best aim I can do and aim for my pitch bucket while I ratchet this, the pistons back. I'm also noticing that I have no trouble at all pushing these pistons back. It's nice and smooth. So I don't have any hangups. There's no, there's no frozen piston. In the fluid, take note of the color. It's still nice and clear. So that tells me that this fluid's in good shape. I shouldn't have to flush it. Now with those pistons all the way back, I'm gonna snug up the bleeder. Take my tool out of there. Disregard this pad. And I'm gonna get a bungee cord and I'll just hang that caliper up out of the way. Now I can take the outer pad out. Let's get ready to dismount the caliper bracket. So it is a 21 millimeter socket on the caliper bracket to knuckle bolt. There we go. Once you've got them broken free, you just back them all the way out and put the caliper bracket aside. Now we can take the rotor off of the hub. So I'm gonna take off the old caliper hardware kit. It's just the caliper bracket hardware. Use tin shields. There's four of them on each caliper for the front. It's where the pads ride on the bracket. And then we have caliper sliding pins. We have the boots. So you just see how I just pinch that, pull that slider boot off, and you just pinch the boot and slide it down. Same on this side. Here we have a new front caliper hardware kit for a 2011 Ford F-150. We bought this from 1A Auto, and here's the old kit that we took off. So the good thing about the new kit, it comes with black coating on it, and actually a neoprene style mesh on the bottom where it hits the, the metal. This one does not, it's straight tin. And rust films back there and causes these to swell, which won't let the pad slide on the bracket. So this style is pre-coated and it has a neoprene to stop the rust. It comes with new boots for each slider pin. The set comes with for both calipers. So if you need this part or any other part for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. So now that the bracket and all the hardware off of it, I'm gonna take a wire brush and I'm gonna clean where the caliper hardware sits getting rid of any debris, any rust buildup. I want a nice smooth surface. You can use a wire wheel, sandpaper, whatever you have at home. And you just do that to all four seats on the bracket. Clean them good. Before I install the new sli the slider pins, I like to clean them up. Uh, simply, I, I take off the old caliper grease, examine the pin, make sure there's no rust spots, there's no cracks, it looks in good shape. So I take some of the new caliper grease and I will coat the pin, not too heavily, 
just to coat the pin. Sometimes I'll put a little extra glob on the end. Now I can get my new boot. Always put grease on the inside of the boot. I like to put the grease on the inside of the, the ridge so that it's there for as it heats up and in the future it disperses the grease. So I'm going to slide that on the caliper by just pushing down with my thumb. Goes right over. Put the caliper slider in. I just rotate it as I push it down. It gets any air out. You don't want it to be air bound. It feels good. There's no rattle. Repeat this process to the other side. So before I put the new hardware on, the tins, I just put a little bit of caliper grease to stop rust. The new ones are coated so that they're not supposed to rust, but just a little extra protection. I like to get it in the, in the crevice where water would sit because it is out in the element. Okay, so now we're gonna install the new tins. And there is no front to back, but there is the outer edge. So the big clip is gonna go on the outer edge. You don't want it on the inside because it will hit the rotor. So you put the smaller clip in, then you push down. Let's see if I can get a good angle here. Just like that. So sometimes you can use, see how it doesn't sit 100% straight? And that could just be my strength. So I have to always use little gadgets to comp compensate for just little old me. So I'll take a pencil style pen screwdriver here and I just put it in there and I just pry it out a little bit. I don't manipulate this spring because it needs to be there. So now it should sit a little bit flatter. And then I'll move on to the next one. I'm going to put the last one in. Use my little screwdriver. There we go. I took out a little hammer too to see if I can get it to seat flat. Perfect. So that's what it's going to look like. Now we're ready to reinstall it on the knuckle. Here we have our new sets, set of front brakes for our 2011 Ford F-150. They come from 1A Auto. The pads are pretty thick, nice in size. There's an inner pad and an outer. The inner has got the half moons on it. It's got the milled edges that helps with the uh, heating and the breaking down of the material and disperse, disbursement of the brake dust. And it comes with the cut in the middle for heat and indication of wear. The rotor, it's really heavy duty. It's got some pretty major thickness to it. It's got several good spaced venting, just like an OE rotor. This one, comes also with threaded bolt holes. So if this rotor gets stuck to the hub, you can apply a bolt to pry it off the hub without hammering. So if you need these parts or any other parts for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. Before we install the new rotor, I put a little anti-seize on the hub where the rotor meets, stop future rust buildup. Just gonna give it a thin coat. Okay. Place the rotor on the hub. And what I like to do when I have truck rotors or heavy rotors like this, I'm just gonna put two or one lug nut on once it bottoms on the hub. Makes the assembly of the brake pads a lot easier. Yeah, I just need one. Now I can clean the outside rotor. I already cleaned the inside prior to installing. Use a little brake parts cleaner. Just getting the package grease and my hand prints off. Package oiling for shipping. These are the mounting bolts for the caliper bracket to the knuckle. You can see how the factory puts in thread locker. 
I'm going to clean this up with a wire wheel brush. You can use a wire brush at home. And then we're going to reapply a thin coat of thread locker and torque these down. I'm just going to have a little thin coat of blue strength, red or blue. It is being torqued down to 184 foot pounds. So, so I line the bracket up, put the top bolt in by hand. I'll put the bottom bracket bolt in. So the caliper bracket to knuckle is 184 foot-pounds. I've got a 21 millimeter socket. Here we have our front brake pads from 1A Auto. And if you can see the difference, is you've got two up bumps in the middle. See them? Those are the inner pads. Don't put them on the front and then struggle putting the caliper on. Well, you can. <laughs> I'll try to help you out. And that's not, uh, that's only experience talking. <laughs> I might have done that without paying attention. Put the front pad in. So you put it, I like to put them down on the bottom one first so that way I can push and snap it in at the same time. And I could take my lug nut off and get ready to install the caliper. Okay, the double piston caliper should slide right on. Okay, then we have the two mounting screws. Use a 13 millimeter socket. In the torque specs is 27 foot pounds. Thirteen millimeter socket and twenty-seven foot pounds for the caliper to bracket bolts. Last step in the brake job is to reopen our bleeder screw that we had opened so we could push the pistons back. We're just going to gravity bleed it. So we're just going to let the gravity pull the fluid right out. So we see a steady stream just like that. And we'll tighten that up. We'll clean that up and replace the rubber boot. The dust boot helps from dirt and grime getting in there and seizing up that bleeder screw. Okay, now we can put the lug nuts on. Now we're just gonna bottom out all the lug nuts right to the hub, lower the vehicle, and we'll torque these down to manufacturer specs, 150 foot-pounds in the star pattern. Okay, now the vehicle has pressure on the tire. I didn't lower it all the way enough so that there's pressure on the tire, and I could torque my lug nuts 150 foot-pounds. One more time for safe measure. Now we can. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.